be talking about the HRT 762 suppressor. This is the latest addition to the dual lock line of suppressors and we're going to start with a product unboxing for you. So obviously the suppressor, that's the biggest deal in here, as well as the included muzzle device. Okay. Uh, but there's a bunch of other stuff in here as well that I want to quickly point out for you. So we have some swag stickers, a pack of stickers, which is fun. Those are cool. Check those out. Um, probably the best little piece in here is going to be the unlock and removal instruction quick reference card. Um, make sure that you check this out. It gives you a really good step-by-step -step instructions on how to use the mounting system if you've never used the dual lock uh, mounting system before. So check that out. We also have a little suppressor alignment card in here. Talks about suppressor alignment, talks about the use of uh, suppressor alignment check rods. Those are kind of long precision made uh, rods that you can put down your bore of the barrel once the suppressor is installed on the rifle and, and it'll, then you'll be able to know if your suppressor is properly aligned. So check those out. We'll put a link uh, in the video below for a description or a link to those so you can check out more on those. Also a uh, little manual, a QR code manual card. So just scan it, it'll bump with your phone. So pull up your camera, scan it, and it'll pop you up to uh, the PDF of the product manual, which is just really nice. So, and then on the other side, there's a tutorial video for you, which is essentially this. So um, that's pretty much it. The suppressor uh, we'll talk about for a few minutes. So it comes in this protective case. Okay, it's uh, finished in uh, high temperature C-series Cerakote. So it's a very high quality finish. The rear uh, locking collar is actually gonna be um, PVD coated. So that's um, a very high quality coating there. Um, you'll notice there's some kind of color pointing through the, the wave spring here. The, the whole suppressor is H900 um, heat treated. So it's 17-4 stainless steel and 718 Inconel in terms of the materials that we use, um, but it's all heat treated. The interior is all uh, laser welded baffles in there, EcoFlow baffles. So those baffles are gonna give you low back pressure. Uh, we, we do a lot of research and development here to make sure that the product is optimized kind of as a system, not just for muzzle signature numbers, uh, which traditionally the suppressor companies have focused on, but also so that it's uh, low back pressure to the shooter, so it sound, sounds good in the total environment. So check out those sound testing videos, but we uh, meter at three different locations, the, both of the ears of the shooter as well as the muzzle of the rifle, and that way we're able to you know, tweak things with the various products um, to, to make them just ideal for use. So from the back here, yes, we have the dual lock, uh, attachment system, which we've done a lot of content on. Then we have our patented, which this is a, a patented uh, mounting system. We also have our patented uh, wrench flats here. They're kind of aesthetic, but also functional so that you can actually get a, get a grip on this if you ever need to. Um, moving forward, we have the low profile three, uh, three prong flash hider uh, end cap geometry, reminiscent from the Reki series of suppressors. Um, and this actually features some interior uh, geometry as well to increase performance and reduce flash on that. So essentially what the HRT7 is, is it takes the dual lock mounting system of the dual lock five and seven and incorporates it into a traditional tube over design. So this is not a tubeless design. That's why it's a little bit heavier. It's 18 and a half ounces, uh, 7.65 inches in length and one and a half inches in width. Um, what that extra weight does is it basically makes the product more durable. So if you're if you're wanting the most durable 762 suppressor in the dual lock line, uh, this would be it. Um, like I said, features the EcoFlow baffles, the low pro uh, flash suppressing end cap. Um, so it's just you know doing a great job of flash suppression, sound suppression, and durability. This is also rated up to 300 Winchester Magnum, so it's going to be good on your 5.56 rifles as well as your AR 10s. Um, you know, bolt actions, you name it. Um, so, uh, um, you know, the, the only, uh, obviously the only thing to know about it is it's a little on the heavy side, but that's where you get super durability. So there you go. Uh, next, we're gonna go into the, the host of muzzle devices that are available for it. 
Okay, so obviously you can see quite a few muzzle devices in front of me. Um, since the release of the dual lock series of suppressors, we've added uh, quite a few options. Um, I'm just gonna kind of go over them for you uh, from your left to right. So we have the long flash hider. So now we actually have a long version of this, which is pin and weldable. Um, that'll bring your 13.7. Uh, 556 rifles to a pinnable length. This is available in 556 only. Uh, we also have a bayonet attachable, uh, I'm sorry, BFA, yeah, BFA and bayonet attachable three prong flash hider. This was made in 556. This was made for the military uh, for training considerations. Um, so if you're if you're a you know law enforcement or military unit that uses blank firing adapters and stuff like that for training, this is a device that is. Uh, essentially training compatible. Then we have the flash comp. This is the latest and greatest updated flash comp. So this is a kind of a favorite device of a lot of people, um, hybrid muzzle device. Then we have a five slotted, um, kind of enhanced birdcage flash hider. So it has your rebar cutter on the front, um, just really high quality flash hiding, so very low flash. So if you want a, a military styled birdcage type device that has really low flash. That one's good for you. Um, we also have the normal length three prong flash hider. Um, so, you know, I, I kind of prefer this one. Uh, this is good for your 14 and a half inch and longer uh, barrels, or if you got an SBR, you know, your short barrels. This, you know, these obviously the longest, the longer the tines, the better the flash suppression. Um, then we have the tactical compensator. This is kind of my favorite muzzle device all around. Uh, features, you know, a bunch of little little gas release holes um, just to keep flash kind of low, despite the fact that it's doing a, a really good job of, of actually muzzle brake performance and compensation. Features the three prong uh, flash hider end cap geometry, similar to the Recce 5 and 7. This is actually a two piece laser welded design, so it's pretty cool the way that it's made. Then we have the uh, two port reverse tined uh, Paladin break. This is gonna be best for your bolt action, precision rifles, stuff like that, that you wanna kill extra recoil on. Um, you know, if, if in fact you're ever not using the, the, the suppressor, which I tend to just run the suppressor most of the time. But also this gives you two sacrificial baffles to extend the life of the suppressor so that the blast baffle isn't, isn't taking as much of a beating. Um, then you've got your short minimalist three prong flash hider. Uh, which actually still does a terrific job of hiding flash. Then you've got your reverse uh, over the barrel, kind of mini over the barrel micro break. Um, this will actually come over the barrel about a half inch or so. Um, and yeah, just a neat, neat product. Check that out. Then we've got uh, the easy break. So we, we've, you know, this is the only break in the line that actually doesn't require the use of timing shims to get the geometry just perfect. Um, so this one is nice because it's, you know, you just slap it on there, wrench it down, good to go. Um, this has a single port brake on it. Um, so there you go. And then we have the minimalist brake, which is a directional brake that does require the timing shims. Um, and there you go. So pretty huge line for muzzle device options with this product, um, which is exciting. Um, I also have, just so you guys can see it, I, I also have the, uh, HRT5 next to the 7, so you can see the length difference here. Um, you know, obviously with the 762 can, you need it to be a little bit longer to give you good suppression on those 30 caliber cartridges that have more powder in them and you know more case capacity. Um, so that's just a quick little viewpoint there. So next, I'm going to run into uh, mounting it and then maintenance. So in front of me, I have a 16-inch uh, Griffin Mark 1 rifle. Uh, with the tactical compensator on here, as well as our optics mount. This is just a nice little rig for mid-range precision. Um, I'm gonna just show you quickly how to mount the HRT-7. So you're gonna grab this rear collar here, and notice how it's all flat back here when it's in the locked position. You're gonna pull this down and turn it to unlock it. So now you'll notice that the pin this stainless steel pen is in the center of this, uh, this material up here. Once you see these three fingers here and you're unlocked, that means obviously you're good to put on 
good to put it on the, the rifle. So then you're just gonna put it on the Acme threads. You'll notice there's a taper in front of the Acme threads. So that taper actually contacts a taper on the inside of the silencer so that when it's tight, you get that taper on taper fit. None of the carbon or gas can then blow rearward uh, uh, into the mounting system. And then you're just gonna take your little collar and rotate it one of two directions. Um, and you're looking for that to be super flat in the rear and the spring to be fully rearward. That way you know you're locked. So if it doesn't lock the one way, like I did earlier, if it's not locking on this position and you're kind of still seeing those metal fingers there, then just move it to the other position and, and you'll lock. So one of those two positions will always work. We put two locking positions on this mounting system on purpose because that way we can get up to 120 different locking positions in a 360 degree circle. So we have a locking position for every three degrees um, by putting two of those locking positions in there versus one. So that makes the suppressor really tight, super accurate. Um, there's no wiggling or anything like that. And um, just a great mounting system. So when you're done shooting, obviously, you know, unlock it, allow the suppressor to cool before you touch it. That's huge. Uh, make sure that it's nice and cool. Unlock it, pull it off. And now we can talk about maintenance. So this actually is a muzzle device, which you can see that, that actually has been shot. So you'll notice that uh, on the exterior of it, exterior of it, there's uh, you know a little bit of carbon and stuff like that, some, some carbon residue. What you're gonna wanna do is take a brass bristled brush and just brush the taper on, um, that you see that little angular geometry and make sure that it's free of carbon. Um, if that taper is clean, then, you, then we know that you're gonna get ideal fitment of the suppressor and minimal point of impact shift, um, the accuracy that you, you know, expect out of a Griffin product. But if you don't do that maintenance, um, and you allow copper to build up on those surfaces and you're putting the can on and off and you're going to the range multiple times without cleaning it, you know, that's where you, you probably will see point of impact shift changes and things like that. Um, and you shouldn't be surprised, okay? So with the silencer or sound suppressor, whatever verbiage you like, we're gonna use a one inch ID uh, bristle brush. You can find these on our website under su suppressor maintenance section. Uh, but I'm just gonna take this, put it in the rear and just twist this around in circles on that taper several times, making sure that the taper gets clear of carbon as well. Okay, and that's pretty much all you need to do. Um, that cleans the taper. And then if I was going to be putting this back on, going to the range, I would use some form of anti-seize. Uh, we sell in small quantities a 2000 degree rated uh, high temperature anti-seize product, so it works for belt fed, full auto applications, you name it. Um, we've never had issues using it, and we've been using it for probably over 10 years. So you just take a little small amount of this on your fingertip, that's how I do it, or you can use a Q-tip or whatever you like. And I just kind of dab it and apply it to the taper on the muzzle device, like this, just getting a nice thin coat around that taper. And if you want to, you can put it on the taper on the inside of the su suppressor as well. You don't really have to, as long as one of the services is uh, lubricated, then you're fine, okay? Then when you go to screw this thing on, you'll kind of feel a nice squish because of that lubrication. And uh, you, you could then heat this thing up with ridiculous belt fed or full auto use, uh, go nuts with it, you know, shoot it 500 rounds or whatever, 1,000 rounds and then uh, you'd have no problem with, co with carbon binding. Um, this, is, this system for us has been pretty dang awesome in terms of car carbon binding anyways. Um, feel free to ask the general public too in you know, sub forms and things like that, how their experience has been. Um, but it's, it's a great system regardless, but these are just great tips for literally any suppressor you're ever gonna use. Um, you know, carbon's just a way of life with, with firearms. It's just part of, the, part of the game. And as long as your interfaces are clean, you know, and you do a little bit of maintenance for those, um, then you're gonna be basically set for success. So with this product, you know, since it is fully welded uh, and sealed, um, there is no way to take it apart for cleaning. 
Um, now, you'll notice a lot of the rifle silencers on the market are that way because rifle ammunition has a fully jacketed bullet typically. Um, 22 bullets don't, you know, rimfire bullets. They're, they're lead, exposed lead, or maybe they're copper washed. So they have a very slight copper coating to them. Um, that's why 22 suppressors get so filthy dirty. Uh, pistol suppressors get really dirty also because a lot of pistol ammunition has exposed bases on the backside of the projectile. But for rifle, rifle suppressors, you know, they're fully jacketed. So they tend to stay clean a lot longer, you know, than pistol suppressors and, and uh, rimfire suppressors. And, you know, what companies usually do is they kind of beef them, them up then with, you know, fully welded, uh, engineering practices uh, so, such that they can be super durable and last a long time. So if you wanted to clean this product, you know, I would suggest only cleaning the, the uh, interfaces like I talked about, but you could, you know, drop it in a ultrasonic cleaner or something like that. Um, just knowing that, you know, you will most likely damage the finish in some way or another. Now, some people don't really care about that. Um, they're like, yeah, I just want to clean out the insides. I don't care if I damage the finish. I'm gonna respray it anyways, that's fine um, if you wanna do that, but it's just you know something to be aware of. So that pretty much covers the HRT7 in, in good detail. Um, I love the suppressor, you know, when we when we engineered it and tested it, we were doing it for um, you know 762 uh, NATO, uh, so your 308 Winchester, also 300 subsonic, 556. You know, so we were, we were throwing quite a few different rounds through there, um, tuning it in and making it a, a nice suppressor. Hope you guys enjoy it. Hope you enjoyed this video also. Um, this product, just like all the other Griffin products, is backed by Griffin's lifetime perpetual warranty. So in the rare event that you would need customer service, um, like approximately 1% of our customers do need, um, you know, we'll be able to turn this around for you pretty quickly and uh, get you back in business. So. Thanks a lot for watching and hope you enjoyed it.